see if that works. That's too tippy. Teeter tottering there, whatever you want to call it. Out so you don't lose that. Oh, you son of a mother. You're getting me. We're finding the weakness here. I thought I just cut the damn thing off of the grinder, but. Transmission in neutral. Although it might just oh, really come So that is probably, I don't know if I should undo it here. Probably undo it there. Just leave this on there. Yeah, because if I do it in here, it's be a pain in the ass. I'll take it off right there. But it looks like. That may just pull through, but it'd probably be a pain in the ass when you're putting this back together to get it up through that hole. Let's so see what happens when you pull it. So, oh, so all this does is move that right there. So, the room. I think this is it because there's brake. Got the brake unhooked. There's the gas. We just unhooked the gas or whatever throttle. I thought that was it, but I found oh, there it went. And then there's this stinky thing. Whatever you call this. was anticlimactic belts unhooked all right now i'm gonna do it wouldn't be prudent so <clears throat> and you know what's really cool some of you younger people have never even seen this before heard tales of such a thing. Well, now you know it's true. There actually were this group of rebel fasteners that were not metric. Is that coming loose? Or am I just sitting here spinning a damn bolt? Because that would suck. nuts on the bottom I was like man I was spinning those things and nothing happened I'm like oh come on don't do that to me but that means then this is still a half inch yep Yo. Oh, 
one bolt holding it in on this side. Okay, if I did my homework right, the only two things holding this, there's a, one of these bolts on either side holding this transmission in. So let me go get the other tire. Got the tires on. And then I can get these two from the back. Okay, you can see I've got the tire on. I have it right to the edge here, so I have the most room right here. And I got the jack up under the case of the transmission. I don't know if y'all can see or not. Y'all can actually that thing's sucking in the light pretty good because this is dark to me. My little flashlights. Battery's dead. Charging. So hopefully this transmission just falls down. Let's see on this side. Looks like it fell down on the jack. I don't know. I think we will know when we do this side. I'm trying to do this where y'all can get a somewhat of a view. And I can get in there. Okay, it's going the right way. Excuse me. Something happened. Sure feels like it's dropping. I got this bolt out or is it binding? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Oh. There we go. Let's see if I can gracefully. There she be. In here. I think right there. It's for the gear oil, eighty ninety. And over here, right there, right there, see it right there? That's for the transmission fluid, but we're not pulling that off because that's not how, the way you fill it is through this bellows here. Let me scoot this. But inside of here is a bellows, so if you think, It'll be easier to show it to you tomorrow, but it's um, it's like a big rubber expanding thing, kind of like a balloon maybe, or it looks like those shock absorber protector, those rubber things that go in and out, except one in sealed. So the whole thought behind this is this thing will be, transmission will go down like this, and so this is facing up, and at the factory they fill it up to where it never, you know, whatever their predetermined level is. They compress this bellows, put a piece of tape or something right here to keep it from, you know, create a vacuum so it can't open back up. Then they slide it in there and a little bit of fluid will run out and then they tighten this down. Then they take this off and it puts pressure. But what that allows to happen is as the fluid expands, contracts, hot and cold, the bellows can move in and out, allowing the fluid to do, fluid to do that without pushing any out. And the main thing is it keeps... Uh, there's no air in here. So there's no air, no moisture, and it makes it a completely sealed unit. And that's why it's lasted 20 something years. Um, still works. I'm just doing this more to fix it before it breaks. So obviously, it's got a leak somewhere.
but I mean, whatever. Can't get really parts for these things because even when they were new, they were considered non-serviceable. It was like, if, you know, if, if, if it was under warranty and it broke and they said it didn't work, they just dropped, they did what I did. They dropped a whole one out and put a whole new one in. They didn't really repair them, so... We, on the other hand, shall mess with it. Before I go in for the night, um, pop the nut off of that thing, that top pulley, so I, I want to be able to power wash underneath there, but that's all kind of one piece, and I don't want to jack it up, so I just, I'm going to let it, I spray WD-40 on it, I'm going to let it sit overnight. And then before I power wash this thing, I'll try to pull that off, because I don't, I want to be able to get under it, and also I don't want to risk hitting that plastic fan.
This is just water displacement, WD-40. So we'll let that sit. I'm on my lunch break right now, so. I gotta put on a tie and go to a Zoom meeting, or actually, Cisco, but not Zoom, but you get the deal. But I got this banged out at lunch, so. Hopefully today after work, drain it and refill it. Okay, we got it. We're back in the garage. It's been power washed. It's all clean. It doesn't look clean, but this is like some kind of corrosion or something. Before I drain this, the transmission, the two hydraulic pumps, this is the differential. So this has just got like gear oil, an 80-90 gear oil. So I want to get this thing off. I think I'm going to spray some WD-40 on it because it's rubber and I'm worried about, I mean this is 23 years, so this thing was from 97, I bought it in 97 or 98, I think 97, 98, anyway it's over 20 years old, so I don't want to screw it up, I'm not quite sure what the, obviously this is not meant to be taken back out. Feels like it's coming out. I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to rip it. It is something's happening. I'm not sure what. So that's what it looks like. Okay, I've got a screwdriver in there to measure it, but it did, didn't say, I mean, it wasn't very descriptive, it just said probe it and see the depth, but if you go this way, you can go down this far. If you go straight down, it just goes to right here. So I'm gonna see what this one is. And that is one and a half inches almost. So, Let's try straight down. See if that gives something that more matches the manual. Yes. Okay, so there you go. There's the answer to that. Doesn't seem to have lost any gear oil. And Smells like you're on. It's like either it's got some chattering, or this may be that. Um, I don't know if I want to change it or not. This feels like it has. Um, uh, what's that stuff? No, that was really popular, like graphite in it. that doesn't look like to me that doesn't look like bad well it's hard to tell unless that's is that graphite in there or is that is it that wore out because it doesn't smell burned it just but it does smell like freaking if y'all ever smelled gear oil it don't it ain't nothing stink the way it does Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I've been sitting here pondering whether to drain that fluid out or not because a lot of these mower training manufacturers have their own, you know, special blend of herbs and spices and crap. But every reference they had for differentials, which is what that is, was just said 8090 gear oil. But I'm not sure if that's some 8090 oil they got bent, they got uh, like, not bent night, that was the grease they used, but like, you know. Oh, graphite or some crap mixed in there or if that's just it's that nasty because something is worn in so my thought process is I've got some good 8090 oil I'll dump this stuff out but it won't all come out so I'll put new 8090 in there and then 
if it did have graphite, it'll, there'll still be some graphite in there, and if not, then whatever. So, see what happens. And <laughs> there we go. Not much. Okay, well maybe that made the decision for me. Okie dokie. I'm gonna throw a shot of this stuff in there. Hyperlube, this stuff works good. I mean, basically what it does is if you're familiar with like barn chain oil, how if you get it on your fingers, it's really sticky. Here, I can show you. Like this stuff, this gear oil. Nothing, right? So you put a little of this Hyperlube. Get some on my finger. See that? Let's see. See how it does that? It's like bar and chain oil. It's just sticky. It's really good for gears. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get that plug back in there. I just used that. You, I was my thinking you don't want to use a screwdriver you don't want to use a screwdriver because you might poke a hole through the bottom of it so now that that's in there okay now one of the tests um, the diagnostic tests is to put a put something in here and check the depth it's got a piece of coat hanger So the depth is hmm, looks like three and five eighths. Let me measure from here. Yeah, three and a half. Three and a half inches. And I'll look it up later. I'll put some text on the screen what the because basically how deep you can go shows how much fluid you've lost. So what's behind here is this. This is called a bellows. And the way this works is you fill this thing up with oil. You compress this. And this goes underneath this. You put a piece of tape over here so this stays like it puts a vacuum on it. And you put this in here and the oil squirts out. And once you get it all in there you take the tape off and this it doesn't expand because it's full of well don't get it's full of oil but what happens is, it, is it, it'll, it'll expand out and it'll have it'll keep pressure on there and the purpose of this thing is so this is a completely sealed unit so as that fluid gets hot it expands and this will take up the space as it cools down the fluid contracts this will take up the space and what it does is allow it to be no air in there. It's all fluid all the time. Now what can happen is slowly these things lose fluid. You know, even when they're cold, it starts expanding until it expands this much. And then there's like no more room. And everything it loses past then, it starts sucking in air. So let's see. We can see a fully expanded depth would be about right here. So this will tell us, this will tell us if we've already fully expanded this bellows or there's still a little bit left in there. Yeah, so if you look, fully expanded, it's a little over four inches. So that tells me that even though this thing's 22, 23 years old, it hasn't completely, there's, this bellows is still keeping some pressure in there, so there's no air in here, which is good. 
Now we're, you know, it's obviously you could see how dirty it was. It's lost fluid, but what we're gonna do is we'll compress this thing, replace the fluid. It'll be all good in the hood. So, okay, let's start loosening these. And I wonder if it, it should, if my hypothesis is correct, it may squirt out a little fluid because that bellows isn't completely expanded, but then I could be wrong. Which, contrary to belief, does actually happen. And this is also the reason you really can't add fluid to this drain plug right here. Y'all, can y'all see that? Yeah, that's the drain plug for this. Because this, well, you actually you could if you were able to get a pull a vacuum on this. With the, I mean, add fluid with it in the mower, mower. If you could pull a vacuum on this and pull that bellows back, and then you could fill it up right there. But that would be if you got a really bad leak because there's no way to drain it. There's no drain plug, and the only way to drain it is to do what I'm doing now. Take this off and turn it on its head. You can see earlier ones had um, tamper-resistant screws, and then they just gave up on it because they're like, what the hell? plate so you can see it looks like maybe the bellows is leaking because it's all nasty in here can y'all see that and this should just be yeah can y'all see in there oh no that's crap that came in through that little hole so it's just dust But there's that. I'm a, this is done looking great shape, but I'm gonna keep it. Stick it over here in this thing for now. So if you want to look, there's the fluid level. Now it's funny because the let me turn y'all so you can see down in there. The depth you are supposed to fill this to is. It's measured from this flange, flange down. And I'll, I'm gonna scan these and put them on the video so you can hit pause. But the first step is all like doing a pressure test. Before you change the fluid, you should test, you know, whatever, test the pressure and see if you've got an internal leak. It's like, no, I'm gonna change the fluid and if it, whatever. So you can see it says, after pressure, so this is all you need to know. Remove the bellows, cover screws using the Peerless tank. Yeah, you don't need that. Completely drain old synthetic oil from the VST. Then add the hydraulic oil part number, blah, 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 which I've got, until the oil level measures, and I'll check that out. Yeah, you can pause that. 129.30 seconds from the top edge of the bellows housing. Install the bellows, snugging down, da, 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 da. you can read this, and it shows right there, see you compress it and put a piece of tape over it. And then once you've got everything in there, you, it says to get, get these screws snug, except for one, and you get it kind of on the high side, and then you pull the tape and that bellows should start expanding and pushing fluid out, and then you tighten it down real fast. So it's all fluid all the time. But let's see. So we're supposed to be one in 29, 30 seconds, which is basically two inches, but let's see where we're, how much we've lost. So we're about four and a half inches. So we've lost about two and a half inches of fluid out of there over the 20 years. So an inch every 10 years, 
something like that. Not bad. And still, and this thing, like I said, this thing still is running fine. It's a little slower in reverse, which seems to be a common problem when they start losing fluid. But it still runs fine. But if, I don't know, it's like you get to know if you've had it for this long, you get to know your machine. And I can just feel that sometimes it just doesn't feel very happy. Y'all seeing that? Yeah, okay. So you can see what's coming out. No, no, man. You just stay right there. All right. So the kit from Jack Small Engines. You, I mean, a lot of people use 2050 motorcycle race and all. I said, I'm just going to buy the real, real thing. So it comes in a box. Inside that box is this, which contains a new plate. So you get a new plate. There's this box inside that box. Which comes with a new bellows. And then you get two quarts of mystery fluid. Now remember, you're supposed to fill it to 129.30 seconds from the top. Now you can tell that some engineer plugged something into a calculator and just spit out the, the amount. And nobody really thought about it. Is 3.30 seconds going to really make a difference? Can we just say two inches? But, who am I? Smells like just motor oil. Everybody that I've been re watch, if you watch this YouTube videos, people use um, 2050 synthetic motorcycle racing oil. I don't know what to do with motorcycle oil. Is. Maybe it has more additives or less additives or something in it. But well, let's suck that one up. Whew, come on, baby, don't. <laughs> hmm. Now you can see, I don't know if y'all can see that, there's some bubbles in there. So one of the things I'm going to do is let this just sit and percolate a little bit. So I want all the air out. There's enemy. There's bad cavitation, moisture, all bad things. Right here. Watch this, this break. So that means it's pumping through the pump and the hydraulic motor. Okay, now, now let's go the other way. So, I'm going to put my gloves on. I took this thing, put a piece of tape over it. This is the new one. And the, one, the side that says, do not void, do it a warrant, or you'll ruin your warranty. That goes on the outside. You just take this. I'm going to line it with these holes. With the screws. And, can y'all see this? Yeah. You just push it down. 
squeeze it, and it, it seals. So, now I take the four screws. See, it's almost touching. We're gonna stick this down in here. So what it says, it's got a, you got a high side and a low side. So the side where the air is gonna be is up here. I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's not flat. It's sitting like this, or it's not like this. It's like this. So this side is higher than this side. And the reason that's important is what we're gonna do. Is one not cross thread these. Come on, don't fight me. That one went in. That one went in. Went in. Went in. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is get these all snug. Let me make sure nothing's cross-threading. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get these snug. Get this side pretty tight. And this side kind of tight. Pull the tape. The bellows will expand and push the air out the high side. Once we get a, you know, once we see a little bit of oil coming out, we just hold it down and tighten it up and then you should have a completely full unit for the bellows you know everything should be happy it's actually a pretty cool system I would have preferred to have one I can just drain the oil out of the bottom but hey who's complaining here all right, so let's see what happens. If I don't know if I've already tightened this so much that fluid can't get out. Okay, so let's see if we can just get some fluid to come out. Ah, look right there. See? Uh-huh. All right. That's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for that bellows to slowly push that fluid up, all the air out. No, it's... this. Where? Right there. So it's set up to three is fine. So and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. Decided to do is instead of trying to bring the transmission up, just bring the tractor down. Makes sense to me. There it is. on the jack stands and then we can put the jack back underneath the transmission
can get it on video because I need all three arms. But basically, I just ended up holding this thing and holding it and wiggling it. I got all three. Okay. Then. So, like, I've lost a couple of cotter pins. They went flying across the room. But you can take a piece of coat hanger, and I make it looks kind of like a musical instrument, but... Okay, finally. Let's push it over. There. Excuse me. Once you get it in that far, pretty much can't slide on you. Okay. Let's see what happens. Turn on my fuel. I have not tried it. Oh, that's a lot less stiff. It's pumping. Let's see what happens. smoother. It's hard to explain if you, you know. But I lubricated all these pivot points, so maybe that's part of the sensation. to adjust the uh, foot pedal right here because you can adjust the throw the front and back throw but other than that it seems to be running good consider that a success ran it was real smooth no chattering um, it was nice it was nice it was running good so hope you all enjoyed that hope it helps somebody especially if you're still working on these old peerless transmissions ain't much to it it was kind of intimidating looking at it but honestly it was getting the transmission out and in is the hardest thing once you get it out it ain't nothing and having a pressure washer really helps if not, plan to have some kind of scrubby brush, something you want to get that thing clean because the heat, just cleaning out those fins helps a lot. See ya.